Bonjour, Natalie here. Welcome to Franco Foods. Today, we're visiting Switzerland. Now, some of you are probably thinking she's going to make something with chocolate or a fondue or something with cheese. But nope, I'm making the national bread called Zupf. It's a bread made with an enriched dough, kind of like brioche. Like a brioche, the dough contains milk, butter, and eggs. So to start, I'm going to activate the yeast by dissolving it in lukewarm milk. When I was researching, trying to figure out what I was going to make for a Swiss dish, I was looking for something that would be considered typically Swiss French. But honestly, I, I was in a bread mood. So I thought, oh, let see what I can find. And then I saw Zopf, and Zopf is the national bread. So I figured, well, if it's the national bread, that means every part of Switzerland makes it, including the French part. So, hey, this works. Hmm. Okay, I'm looking at the yeast mixture and I'm a little concerned by the lack of bubbling. Huh. Well, I'm going to keep going. So as in previous recipes, I'm doing everything by hand. I do this to encourage anyone who's watching who doesn't have the mixer with the dough hook. And I want that person to go, hey, you know what? If she can do it, so can I. Actually, speaking of which, I'd like to give a shout out to Joanne Belanger, who has made several recipes from Franco Foods. Thanks so much for sharing the pictures, Joanne. Keep it up. Bravo. Bien fait. Okay, adding the softened butter is a little challenging. I hope I managed to incorporate it well. Some of the recipes I found did call for melted butter. I wasn't sure which one was the more traditional. I picked the softened butter. Maybe I should try the melted one next time. So, as I was researching Swiss food, I did find it difficult to find a food that would be considered Swiss cuisine. Well, winds up, there is no such thing as a national Swiss cuisine. Swiss food is basically a reflection of the country's cultural diversity. Switzerland, for example, has four official languages. German, which is the most widely spoken, French, Italian and Romance, and I hope I said that right. If I understand the explanation of Romance well, it's basically a Latin-based language that is heavily influenced by German. So pertaining to the food, these four languages and the cultures that go along with those languages, they are what have influenced the cuisine in the country, and it's everywhere. So it, I guess it intermingles from one region to the next. So for example, raclette could be potentially considered more of a French Swiss dish, but it's enjoyed throughout Switzerland. So again, is it, you know, it's hard to, to pinpoint something that would be uniquely specifically French. Okay, so all the recipes I found say to knead the dough for 10 minutes if you're doing it by hand. Well, I've been kneading for about five minutes and it's already feeling smooth and less sticky. So I wonder if it's really necessary to go the full 10 minutes. I think I'm going to stop. Hope I'm not being too impatient, but I'm going to let it rest now and rise for until it has doubled. Hopefully it all works out. Okay, the bread has doubled, but it's not as smooth as I would like, and it feels really dense. Well, it is what I have, so time to shape it. Zopft, or Zopf, gets its name due to its shape. Zopf means braid or tresse, as we say in French. And the story behind the shape of the bread is that when a man would die, way, way back in history, <laughs> his wife would cut off her braid to bury it with him. I won't share with you what they used to bury with the husband before that. If you're curious, you can go check that out. <laughs> There's a bunch of links in the description below if you're curious. So eventually, instead of cutting off her own braid, instead the wife would bake a bread in the shape of a braid and she would bury that with the husband. Today, much nicer, much happier circumstances around Zupf. It is a national bread. It's given as a gift, a housewarming, a hostess gift. It's served uh, with holiday meals. It's found throughout Switzerland. Now it's known also as Sunday breakfast bread and is served throughout Switzerland in, in Swiss households with butter and jam and honey and just for a nice Sunday breakfast. 
By the way, in the description below, there's a link for a video on how to shape the zupf. You might find it useful if you make your own zupf. Okay, the braid has rested, the oven is preheated, time to brush the egg wash on the braid and bake it. This week's baking vocab is incorporer l'épeautre, dissoudre le lait tiède. Here we go! Okay, let's see. So the house smells like a bakery. Oh my God, it smells so good in here. And the color, oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Nice and shiny. Now the shape is definitely off. It's supposed to taper at the end, just like you would on a, a braid, right? A regular braid. And it's really heavy. I'm actually surprised at how heavy this loaf is. It has a nice hollow sound. So I'm hopeful that it's baked through and through. Oh boy. So it's really dense. The crumb is really dense and you can see it's it's undercooked. It's uh, not bouncing back and it's really, really thick. I probably should have kneaded the dough for the recommended 10 minutes. Okay, time to taste it. So it is quite doughy, but it has a nice taste. I can imagine that if it's not quite as dense, it would be really quite delicious. Okay, so I was not satisfied with the tzopf I made, and I decided to do it again and see if I could do a better job this time. First thing I noticed when I opened up my yeast is that I saw on the label that it had expired. Not a good thing. You don't want to use expired yeast, right? At least, Lord knows, I just found out the hard way. So I got a new batch and boy, what a difference. It foamed like it should. It was nice and bubbly and foamed up when it activated and I could smell the yeast, like the aroma as I was making the dough compared to last time, like the first one I made. Also, I decided since I'm doing it by hand that I would try doing melted butter instead of the just the soft butter and I think it did a better job of incorporating which would make sense. I am going to try with softened butter again but this time I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my mixer with the dough hook for that. I went the 10 full minutes for kneading and I don't know if it's because of that or there's other factors at play here but the dough had a much better texture even just as I was I was kneading it I could just feel how lighter it felt and it the rise was much faster last time it took like two almost two hours to double this time it just a little over an hour and I'm sure that that is because of the expired yeast the shaping also was much easier. The dough felt lighter and more pliable, so I, it, I felt it was easier. Admittedly, I'd done it once, so it was, that always helps when you've done something once before, but even then, just the, the feel of it was better. I am very happy with the second soap. The loaf is lighter, like it's not actually physically, it feels physically lighter, and the crumb is airier, and it's a much nicer mouth feel. There you have it, the Swiss Zopf. I did wind up, funny enough, making the second loaf on Sunday, so the Hurdy household had a traditional Swiss Sunday breakfast. It was really, really good. I topped some with some fresh butter and honey. Oh, really, really good. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and think about subscribing too, if you don't want to miss what's coming up next. As always, merci et à la prochaine.